Now some of you asked me questions about this false rejection rate and false acceptance rate in our first class. So I want to clarify this in this video. And then the second point, uh, some of you emailed me and asked me to uh, give you guys some short quizzes uh, for every classes so that, you know, um, uh, so that you guys could keep on paying attention to my lecture and then keep pace with me. And so that I could ask some questions to you every now and then. Um, two things. Number one, uh, thanks for asking me that questions. Uh, not, not just two things. Um, I will try, I will try my way of uh, asking questions to you, like short quizzes. Number two, um, on the other hand, that kind of short quizzes was not assigned in the syllabus. The syllabus is the written contract between you and me. So I cannot break it. But um, one thing I could try, okay, is that I could try some, uh, I don't know, um, Google documents based or s Google survey based uh, questions um, so that you can answer some of my short questions um, perhaps every week uh, or every two weeks or something. And and then in terms of grading, I am afraid I cannot include it into, I, I cannot stick in a new section of the quizzes like that. But instead, I may uh, incorporate it into your participation grade somehow. Okay? So that, uh, you know, you try it and then you get the participation grade. Okay? So that it will incentivize you somehow. All right, so that's my solution, I think. And then why don't I have that quizzes, right? First of all, um, if I have a formal textbook, usually the textbook writers give some kind of automatic quizzes like that. I understand that part and I, you know, there are some easy textbooks like that so that I can enjoy it <laughs> easily and then motivate you somehow more. The trouble with that, my course is that there's no formal textbook um, and then so I have to squeeze out my brain to figure out some more quizzes like that. Um, I'll try. Um, so please bear with me. Um, now having said that, let me go to this uh, uh, discussion about false discovery rate, uh, false rejection rate and false acceptance rate. All right. Wait a minute. Now every time you do some face recognition, for example, my phone, right? My phone, every time I turn it on, um, it opens my iPhone, by the way, uh, through face recognition. So the computer over here, Apple, will always ask a question. What if the guy that I see over here is not Andy Kim, but somebody else, like hacker, right? Um, so the the machine is always testing this hypothesis whether I am a hacker or Andy Kim, right? The correct person versus some hacker, okay? Are you a hacker? Yes or no? Are you a hacker versus no? So the null hypothesis for this guy is that no hacker, okay? Negative. Alternative hypothesis is that this guy is a hacker positive mm. each time you do the face recognition or anything like ai the machine learning so that they you know determine whether this is really a uh, is, is 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 andy kim versus hacker or john smith versus hacker right they're going through this kind of processes hypothesis testing done every time okay you just don't realize uh, we just don't realize that we are going through that kind of process so often, so frequently. Now, uh, one example of this hypothesis testing is the COVID-19 testing, right? Ah, 확진자, 확진자. Looks like a, are you really, uh, did you get caught with that, uh, the, 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 the bad flu, right? The COVID-19, oh my God, I hope that does not happen. But you go through that testing. Like going through this like huh and then uh, with that okay testing thing 
um, your mucus or anything, uh, based on those uh, for a given amount of mucus, there must be some, I don't know, some materials that could be found, for example, some pr proteins within that mucus that uh, the density of this, uh, that density of those materials or the, uh, the uh, materials or the proteins would be correlated with the, uh, whether you got really caught with that, um, what is it, the infected with the virus versus not. Okay, so infected guys may have some distribution of this special, I don't know, some kind of strange um, materials or proteins within the mucus. And then the guys who are healthy would still have their, some, their own distribution of their uh, materials or these uh, uh, proteins, right? So um, once you go through the testing machine, right? They test it and then they count the number of molecules or something like that. So let's let's say call it molecule, right? The molecules will be on average would be lower for uh, you know healthy guys, higher for infected guys. But the thing is, it has a distribution like this. It's not just one and one. Mm. And then the thing is, even for the healthy guys, there can be a chance that you have the uh, high density of uh, certain that um, material did I say what um, and then there are some chances that the guys who got infected has lower uh, degree of those uh, uh, materials or let's call it a symptom right a symptom okay it could be temperature right infected guys may have higher temperature and the, the healthy guys have normal temperature like this but it could be a, have some distribution and then some guys with uh, uh, infection, they still don't have the high temperature like that. 무증상자, non, you know, symptomatic guys over there. Now, how do you determine whether the guy or the person is really infected with the COVID-19 versus not? There is, you set up a threshold, okay? With some testings, right? You set up the distribution, set up a threshold so that beyond which you would claim that test result is positive and below which you would say the result is negative right so that's this threshold that you set up as a tester and now you do the st uh, statistical inference out of it okay for that part um, well we have uh, for healthy guys right um, which is should be negative right should be negative but if as long as you are healthy guys you have two possible outcomes which is true negative okay and then false positive like this over here two different outcomes that you can get for patients i mean the for the uh, infected persons you can have two different outcomes which is true positive and false negative right mujungja kind of things right non non symptomatic guys right like that now false rejection rate what is that well you see it over here okay this one right i don't I don't need this one now false rejection rate what is that that is what we call a significance uh, level right um this is for healthy guys, non uh, 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 healthy guys, right? Negative guys. Truly, this is negative guys. But you have two different outcomes: true negative and a false positive. You could experience out of these two, what is the chance that you will get the false positive result, right? That's false rejection rate. Rejecting what? Rejecting the null hypothesis. Null hypothesis saying that you don't have this infection, you don't have the virus, right? Um, you're rejecting the null by mistake with alpha probability, right? Um, this is a significance level that you set up the threshold. And this is what we call type one error, type one error. Every statistical testing will have type one error and type two error. That's type one error, okay? False rejection, okay? And then that is alpha. There's beta as well, which is called a false acceptance rate 
false acceptance rate? Well, that's this guy over here. Actually, you really have this, you know, virus, but you don't have the symptom or you don't have the material within your mucus thing. Okay? Um, so what's the consequence for that part? Well, they will not, you know, bring you to the hospital. So you will walk along the way, you know, it's like spreading all the viruses. <sighs> That's this guy. Okay? And this one is, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> you're healthy, but you're hospitalized. <laughs> like that. Okay? Um, that's this one. Type 1 error, type 2 error. All right, type 2 error that you see it over here. Well, for this one, what is that? Well, this is for the guys who are, or persons who really have that virus. But, those guys will have two different outcomes. They can have two different outcomes. True positive, right? And false negative, all right? You will be either hospitalized because you have the symptom or you are not recognized as a ha the uh, patient and you are free to go on all of, uh, all of the society right walk around and spread the, the spread the virus like that that's false acceptance rate accepting what accepting the null hypothesis that you don't have the virus so that's false uh, acceptance rate beta we call it type 2 error right now what do you want to know about this well Depending on how you set up the threshold level, there you see a trade-off between this alpha and beta. If your purpose is to shrink down this alpha by setting up the threshold more stringent, right? Then what would happen? Well, your beta, false negative, right? This um, false acceptance rate will increase. Okay? False acceptance rate will increase. This is a situation where you say, let's not call it, um, pay, uh, they, they got infected. Let's not call it, they got infected um, and then get it more stringent. Only when the level is extremely high, you let's say it, they, they got infected. Which means usually you will accept the null hypothesis and say, you're not a patient. Okay? So this kind of, trouble will increase okay beta what about this situation if you push this to the left hand side the threshold then what would happen well um, this is the situation what let's call you know usually whatever you know whatever but uh, the symptoms that you have find it then let's call it a you know you have infection then usually they will hospitalize you okay um, even though you don't really have that virus, okay? Alpha being very big. That's, that's a problem too, right? Um, the good side of that, positive side of that, is that beta is minimized, which means, you know, uh, most of the patients, the true patients, will be, you know, truly classified as a patient, and then they will be hospitalized. So that the guys who are just walking along with, uh, you know, virus in them without symptom, um, those numbers will be minimized. So there is a trade-off between this false rejection rate and false acceptance rate. Okay? FRR, FAR, right? So that's uh, what I want to uh, highlight to you. Okay, thanks for watching.